I was probably a little bit overzealous. I love science. My son loves science. But this year, it just seemed like Hey there homeschoolers are you about done with your homeschool year yet i know it has been such a long road but we are finally done i will be doing a end of the year review shortly so make sure you tune in if you're new to my channel click that bell for notifications and subscribe give a like to this video if it's helpful for you today and i'm excited to dive in with this book well we haven't used it yet. General Science. I had every intention of using this book for seventh grade. I was probably a little bit overzealous. I love science. My son loves science. But this year, it just seemed like I probably bought too much for seventh grade that we ended up not using. I have never used Apologia Science for my son. I was super excited to do so because there's a lot in here. It's a pretty big book as you can see, and it has an even bigger student workbook, which we'll look at in a minute. If you've used Apology of Science before, please leave me a comment and let me know if you like it or if you don't like it. What did your students like about it or what they didn't like about it? I will be linking this in the description below in case you're interested in looking at it. We will be diving into these books here in a minute because I want you to see an in-depth look inside. This has 14 modules. It covers a lot of information. Just to give you a backstory, if you have not seen some of my previous science curriculum videos, for seventh grade, we did a mixture of things. Science didn't quite go like I was imagining it to, <laughs> it worked out fine. But we ended up doing three units of the good and the beautiful sciences that I have specifically chosen for my son to do in seventh grade. Once we got those unit studies done, we actually used the physical world master book science, which I had already had from sixth grade that we never finished. And so it ended up becoming a full year between the unit studies and the physical world book, because it was only partially done, that it ended up being a full year. At the beginning of seventh grade, I bought this Apology of Science with every intention to use it, and we just never did. For those of you who have been listening to my videos for a while, you will know that I have been talking about doing some school over the summertime, because I really don't feel like taking a break from school is necessarily the best thing for my son. So I'm going to attempt to do at least some of this over the summer with my son because it covers so much. So they cover the history of science, scientific inquiries and the scientific method, documenting and interpreting experimental results, scientific analysis and history, earth science astronomy, earth science geology and paleontology, earth science meteorology and oceanography, a general chemistry, general physics, life science, general biology, marine science, environmental science, and science and creation. Now, you might say, Kira, why would you want to go do all that? Well, he has already touched a lot of this. It would actually technically be more of a review from a completely different curriculum because we have touched almost all of those things already in some form or fashion with the sciences that we have already done. It really is just to keep him busy over the summer um, and keep his mind going. I will share with you in upcoming videos what we have decided to do for eighth grade science. Make sure you subscribe and click the bell for notifications so you will know when I do upload those videos for eighth grade. I'm still kind of deciding on a few more things, so I'm not quite ready to post those videos yet. I probably won't have him use every little bit of this. I'm gonna give you a look inside this book, the textbook, and then also it comes with a teacher's manual. Then it comes with a test book for one test for basically each module. So the teacher solution has the solutions for the tests and for the student workbook. That kind of gives you an idea of that you're gonna have these four books. These two are very small, but the student workbooks are very big. If you are not a fan of big books, I do not recommend this curriculum because this is huge. Definitely not something you wanna cart around with you everywhere. For those 
those of you who don't know, I was homeschooled and in high school, I believe we, I believe my mom did choose one or two apology of sciences for me at that point in time. I believe the one I did was the human body. I can't fully remember, but it was extremely detailed. It still is a good reference book to have. Now, if I wanted to sell this book, I always could and just keep the workbook with all his work. But let's go ahead and dive inside these books and see what you think. First book we're gonna go through is the actual textbook. It does have a total of 14 modules. The first one is on the history of science, search for the truth. Second is scientific inquiry and the scientific method. Three is documenting and interpreting experimental results. Four is scientific analysis and history. Five is earth science astronomy. Six is earth science geology and paleontology. Seven is earth science meteorology and oceanography. Eight is general chemistry. 9 is general physics, 10 is life science, 11 is general biology, 12 is marine science, 13 is environmental science, and 14 is science and creation. So their textbooks seem to have a lot of reading. If reading is not something that your child does well or does well on their own or you do not want to read, perhaps Apologia's book like this one is might not be the best fit for you. So after reading, they do have some experiments in here that you can take advantage of. Just to note that this is from a creation mindset or Christian point of view. So at the end, they have a study guide for the module. Now we are not going to do a lot of the experiments for this. I know that there's a lot of people that do um, and they do have a lot of good options. Some of the experiments are really easy. I just don't know how much we will do because it's only my son and he normally likes to do experiments with other kids just to make it more fun. Definitely if your child is into a ton of home experiments that are really easy, this might be a good option for you. I definitely think that this is for people who really, really do love and enjoy science though, because it just covers so many different kinds. If your child is more into animal or nature studies and not as much into the scientific experiments or the historical parts of science, then parts of this might be more boring for them. getting into the astronomy part of the book. Going into module six, is the geology and paleontology. In one of my future videos, I will be talking about what we will be doing for eighth grade science. And in the eighth grade science, we're doing a lot of focus in geology and paleontology, fossils, things like that. So this will be just on top of a general science maybe that we've already done that kind of has touched on the fossils and paleontology. This will just reiterate what he's gonna be probably learning in eighth grade.
So I hope this gives you kind of an idea of how much is covered in here. Again, there's so much in here, I'm not gonna be able to cover it all. They definitely do a really good job of touching on a little bit of everything. So one thing I like about these general science type books is it kind of gives you an idea what type of sciences your students are more in interested in. Because you don't really wanna waste your time on certain sciences that they're not really into it. You just wanna teach them the basics that they need and encourage them in the areas that are really interesting to them. We did already do like some of this study um, in seventh grade through The Good and the Beautiful. That was a good investment. I liked their kingdom and classification science unit study. That was good. All right, and at the end, you can see a lab supply list here. So that's just a good overview of all the different things you would need to do the different experiments and the different modules. And there's your index in the back. A quick look through the workbook. Again, it's very big and thick, so I'm not gonna go through all of it. Your breakdown of your modules and your lab reports here. You have your grading rubrics here. Here's your grade recording chart there. This is how your schedule is going to be laid out here every week and every day, except for four days a week. So that gives you an idea that it takes about 33 weeks with four days. Okay, so this is giving you an idea of vocabulary words, summarizing what you learned, things you can do on your own, timelines, different things about your experiments are right here as well. I'm gonna skip ahead. So as you can see, there's a lot of things you can use here for the notebook. You don't have to use everything if you don't want to. There's definitely some things in here that my son would not be interested in doing. I just want him to communicate more what he's learning about. Some of this he might not actually write down, might just end up talking about it, but at least we have a guide of some facts that we need to go over. There's a lot of space for writing. So if your child is not into writing, most of this you might not use. They do give study guides in here, which is really helpful. All right, so in the back, it has the introduction to labs part. So it's gonna give you more specific details about every lab that you can do. And then it gives you the opportunity to show your results and conclusions. If your students really love labs, this is definitely a book that's going to be good for them because it's gonna give them that opportunity to really write down their thoughts, their understandings, and give them an option to really talk about it. All right, so that's it for the notebook. Last thing I'm gonna go over quick is just the tests. So this is the test for module one, just to give you an idea. It's just a front and back sheet. It looks like each test is about 10 to maybe 15 questions long, so it's not really overwhelming. There's no colored pictures in this book, it's just black and white. And the solutions and tests are in this book. Okay, so it has your modules here. So these are the solutions for the study guides for every module, the test solutions, and then the solutions for the study guide. So this will kind of give you an idea of the way the teacher solution book is set up.
I would like to know what you think about it because, I mean, I'm excited. I think the content is good. If your child is not a reader though, you are really, really against traditional school and learning in this way, it might not work for you at all. Might not be worth the money. A thorough, somewhat traditional layout for me, I like some sort of testing, even if it's not like a lot. I feel like at least I kind of know, okay, what is he really picking up on and what he's not. At the same time, I don't make testing the focus right now until we get into the high school grades. Some testing is really good and some testing and some curriculums are really not that good. I feel like these tests are pretty good. So I think that will give me an idea of what he has picked up over the past couple years. I think this will be a, just a good way to end the general science concepts and knowledge. So I'm looking forward to doing this with him. I myself need a refresher in these things and I probably pick up more now than I did when I was a kid. I will let you go for today. Thanks again for tuning in. I'm always excited to share things with you. If you have any ideas of things that you want to see, let me know. Right now, my curriculum is pretty limited to obviously 7th, 8th, hopefully 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade at some point. I'm always interested to see what you homeschoolers are looking at out there. What are the curriculums you use? What are the grades of your kids? So until next time, hang in there homeschoolers and I will see you in my next video. Shine bright.